Well, the reason why the big push is on at the moment is um, one, because we had a lot of gear to sort of get sorted, but um, also we're, we're trying to race the clock to get to the Gulf to meet a barge that is gonna take all this gear across to uh, Mornington Island. I'm, I'm excited, but we gotta make this date. We gotta get there at two o'clock Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon Tuesday. to load this barge, so. Mate, yeah, the pressure. Our fingers out. We're gonna yeah, get the drive out of us. The pressure is on. So every year I try and do things earlier, but it doesn't happen. I've got three days to go, and there's just literally so much to do. We got gotta get everything packed. Gotta, you know, make sure we've got everything right down to the kitchen sink. Because once we leave here, we don't come back. So Simon comes over, and the first thing I've got to get Simon to do, he's got to start working on the lights. So three days to go, and we're putting lights on. We've got to get the XTM spotlights back on to the new bull bars now. Where's the cable ties? The cable ties are in on the bench there. At the end of the day, we got to do a lot of the work ourselves. The 200's down at the other shop getting the, the winch in, the D new winch. D-Max D. And then the D-Max, we've got to sort that out. Hopefully we've got enough time, but I'll tell you what, we're running out of time. Big time. We've got to make that barge at Columba Root. Columba Root? <laughs> Rumba. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, didn't want to scare you. Sorry, oh my God, we've got a serious journey ahead of us. So I've got the whole crew on the job at the moment. So Nige, who is going to come with us on this trip. It's a bit hectic at the moment. Jace is pinching out, there's so much to be done. Job for me, run down to Calandra, opposite lock, pick up the 200, come back and keep charging. How's it going? Yeah, so we off late last night uh, working on Back in Black. Uh, we we're redoing all the UHF, the roof console, uh, all the airlines, getting rid of all the leaks in the airlines, the air hoses, uh, rerunning air hoses for the new red winches, uh, Jason Specialist and wet red winches, uh, making sure all the wiring was right for them, rerunning new hoses. Uh, so up until about, uh, oh, some ungodly hour last night, but I think Jason broke the record apparently for the late night last night. Um, but the trucks are done, we're just spooling up the last winch now. Hey Jace, how's it going? Yeah, good, they're just spooling the winch now, they're pulling the 200 up and then it's done. So today is Saturday, it's about 1.30, 2 o'clock, and the guys are meant to be up in the Gulf in a couple of days time. So they're gonna be driving with red eyes all the way there. So carpet for my toolboxes, new toolboxes. Yeah, you can't be brand new, mate. Yes, mate. Yeah, a whole new layout this year too. All right, so Jack, stuff in there, yeah, jacking stuff, yep, yeah, too easy. We've got a block or something, a bit of wood in Yeah, yeah, a bit of timber. Bit of wood. Right, guys, so the reason why it's taken so long, and I'll tell you what, it was an absolute mission, it was because we got these special winches, and they come over from the UK, and we were waiting for customs to clear them, so that sort of dragged it way out, and we lost four days. But through the help of opposite lockdown at uh, uh, Caloundra, those guys just put in a massive effort and we got in the front of my 79 and the front of this 200, we've got two brand new Explorer red winches. Now these are a new winch that you're gonna see in Australia. And I'll tell you what, they are an absolute bomb of a winch. This is a 16 and a half thousand pound winch. It has air, air brakes and it also has a control switch in the, in, the, um, in the dash there, inside the cab. It's also remote control. And uh, I am looking forward to see how these babies go. Because we're towing uh, with the, the, the trailers with the DO35 hitch, then we need to change everything from ball to uh, pin, all right, to take the DO35s. And then of course the last thing that I like to check as well as Simon is to check the wheel nuts. I do like to check my wheel nuts before I go anywhere. 
alloy rings, you always want to check the wheel nuts, they do come loose. When they go and the tyres get put on by the tyre joint, you've still got to do that quick check. It's almost like a peace of mind thing. So we're getting down to the wire now. What we've got is a lot of the tools important. You've got to take the right tools, so to speak, but you've got to have you know, a proper jack. You can't use a crappy jack that comes with the car. It's just not going to handle that extra bit of weight. And it's just not versatile if you've got you know, bigger tires and a lift. So you've got to get the jacks, make sure you've got a good bottle jack. Uh, we've got to make sure we get our breaker bars and the right spanners because you just you don't want to get out there and you know something like the wheel nut doesn't you know the one in your kit doesn't fit the one you put the aftermarket rims with it's all those little things you got to think about so i don't know whether you notice but we tow a lot of trailers and some trailers have got different setups so you've got to make sure that you're, you're loading them correctly uh, we've got really big trailers this year so there's a new there's a new toy hauler, all for adventure toy hauler. This thing is absolutely awesome. We're running 285 7017s, uh, Mickey Thompson mud terrains, uh, set of ROH rims. And if you have a look, we've got remote canister shockies, um, coil, so full coil. Haven't gone with the airbag system in this one, you can, but we've stayed away and kept it simple. So this is the duck's nuts when it comes to independent off-road suspension for trailers. And there's also a new expedition hauler, which is a camper with a, a buggy on the back. So there's a lot of gear. You've got to tweak everything, make sure things are strapped down correctly. So because the trailer is so new and we've only literally just built it, a little bit extra grease in, in all the, the pivot points, it's not going to hurt. She looks pretty sweet, eh, Simon? Yeah, she's fantastic, buddy. I'm just supervising, making sure right. I have it right. Here, mate, grab that. It's almost like a, a peace of mind thing, you know. When you know you've done it yourself, that's why we do it. Yes. Oh, we've got to do the other one out there. Yeah, you got the other one, dude. There, go. We're good. Now, to throw the spanner in the works, not only, not only are we using new gear this year, but they're being, the way it's being loaded is a whole new concept. So I've designed uh, the setup where I've got a boat on a trailer and then the trailer on the trailer. So let's just complicate things and haul more gear. Sometimes I think we take way too much gear, but we do use everything and it does help with getting to those awesome places. All right, so now it's time to load up the toys. We've got the buggies, the quad bikes going on. All right, this trailer you would have seen before. This is the one I took away for some testing um, with my family at Christmas time. So this is now going to go away on an off adventure trip. So that we can give it the full test. And then don't forget, we've got to put the 3.7 CJs, 3.7 CJs, they go on the roof. I think it goes up the other way, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> I think we just worked that bit out. We're good, man. We've got one of those going on the roof of the 200. There'll be a 20 in the back, the new 20 Mercury. Uh, there's the, the 50 on the back of the 4.2, which is the boat on a trailer and a trailer on a trailer. So each car gets fitted with its own recovery pack. Now this year, I've got a whole heap of new gear that I've helped design and put together. Recovery gear, very important part of all for adventure, trust me. Some heavy vehicles, we're gonna need good winches and we're gonna need good recovery gear just in case we get stuck. And apparently, it's been one of the best wets up north in the Gulf region. For many, many years, that cyclone that come across has dumped so much it wasn't funny. And guarantee there's gonna be some wet ground up there and we're gonna get stuck. Now, the Camp Boss 4x4 gear is, is something that I'm, I'm really excited about testing on the job because it has been tested in a factory. Now, I wanna test it in real life because that is a completely different scenario. Uh, these canopies you cannot beat. The back drawer, it is gold for all your recovery gear. There's no doubt about it. You can fit so much in them and it's just sort of tucked out of the way. That's the thing about recovery gear. You know, you may not use it, but when you do need to use it, you want to be able to access it. There we go, that's sweet. Beautiful, look at that. Perfect. So not only this year, is uh, the normal Max Tracks. We've also got the Max Tracks Extremes, which I'm going to truck straight up onto the roof rack of my Back in Black truck and my 200, because let's face it, they're extreme trucks. And then of course now there's a set of Max Tracks that go into the ATVs or the side-by-side. -side. So some cool gear going away with us this year. Jace told me these are the ones you're using. Mini Tracks. I think the Mini, the Mini Max Tracks suit Nige to a T with these little MUX. He can have these little Max Tracks. They don't trust me with anything really. I'm allowed to drive the big trucks. 
Well, uh, to use the big gear, I get the little gear. But apparently, it's pretty handy stuff to have, particularly with uh, the ATVs. And when you don't really want a big one. It's apparently size does matter. They got spare parts as well. I don't even know what that is. We don't need brake calipers. Uh, beer and blur brakes. Over the years, we've learned what sort of spare parts to carry, so we don't actually carry that many spare parts. Oh, yeah, we need these U bolts just some spare. So I was just going to throw them in. So if you want me to slot these into a toolbox in the 200 somewhere? I do carry a lot of tools, so each vehicle is self sufficient with the tools. Spare. The big boat. I've got one in my car, but generally a spare is good because if we get separated on the road, you know, something like that, at least someone can do a bit of a tweak and keep going and catch up. Because let's face it, you get a flat tire and you're the last vehicle, you're a long way from the front vehicle when you've got a bit of a convoy. So it helps if you've got your own gear. <laughs> Someone's excited. So, Nige being uh, the fishing expert apparently, he is trying to pack as much fishing gear and fishing lures as he can find. I guess he's probably not used to me and Simon being a bit blasé about fishing. So he's going to be right on the ball. I hope he's got some space, but uh, I think I might have to cull a bit of that because he looks like he's packing it in. Shopping, shopping, shopping. Where's the list of the guy, Well, food in the freezer, food is Simon. So uh, generally when you're sort of packing for a trip like this, don't forget you've got to feed. And we've got to feed seven blokes at any one time. We're trying to feed everyone out in the bush is a nightmare. So we just keep it simple and we get all tubs like this and we just fill up chock full of food. Then we get out there and we worry about it all when we get out there. No one's going to drink the mocha, mate. Unless Dave drinks mocha. Yeah, I might. <laughs> oh, I offered to everyone else and they said no. Yeah, I might. No, the tubs are good. You wait till we do the big shop. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you, you going to put it? You just no, put I it all in. It's just that it's all just chucked in there. There's no organisation. No, there is. It doesn't look like We know it's in there. Yeah. yeah. Like we want to find there. some spare honey, yeah. we're like, boom. Yeah. That is just setting the temperature of the Dometic. We start stocking up with food. Everyone carries spare milk. I think it's just for Simon. Do you set the two different ones for two different things, or, or yeah. just the one setting? No. See, okay. see the little square and shape. That one square. That one shape. Okay. So, so does that make sense? I'll set it one. I'll set it. I'll set it one. That should be good. Yeah. Yeah. There's your egg. Three dozen there. Before you go, you've got to check stuff. There's no point getting out there and going, oh, it's not working. So a quick check, make sure all the system's working, uh, batteries are charging, refrigerators got power, all those sort of things that you don't think of, you've got to check before you go. Yeah, I'll just switch the fridge on. Uh, here we go, Red Vision onto fridge, connected. Okay, where are you, refrigerator? Oh, there she is. Override. Bridge is on. Look at that. So now what I've done is I've locked the fridge, so you can't lock. The only way to switch the fridge off is to come around here and switch it off, rather than so it's locked on the app. As you can see here. Yeah. Pump. Compressor, sweet. I'm good. Fridge is on. I might turn that off traction. That'll do. And you know, I need pots and pans and, and, and cutlery. You know, all the kitchens have got to be loaded up with that. And then, you know, you even got to fill the water tanks because you've got to have water. Simon, can you do a check? Can you go check in that kitchen and see if it's all got cutlery and the bowls and the plates, please, mate? Thanks, man. 
boys will be packing for at least a couple of weeks of food on the road. And after that, we're buying nuts and fish. Yeah, there's your tub. Yeah. So it was jerry cans. You need somewhere to stash the chairs. Yep. Um, that, ch that trailer's all charged up. That trailer has got a big fridge in it as well. So there's no point switching any of that on no. yet. No, so that's all good. So don't forget that there's always a camera truck. So all those people that film, film the television show, they're behind the scenes. They have an identical D-Max to Simon's. Set up like Simon's? Yeah, pretty much. Drive it like Simon too. I mean, it's probably a little bit better. So you just imagine two different trucks, but identical. One with stickers, one without. And so their D-Max has got to be packed up with camera gear. As you can see, there's foam in the back, waiting for our cameras to be loaded. This is where we charge our stuff. The chargers aren't fully set up yet, but this is where all the camera stuff goes, all our drones, 10, 12, 14 GoPros, all our mounts, all our batteries, all our bits and pieces. So if you do the sums, there's some serious camera gear to be set up and also some serious camera gear to be hauling down that road. When you're on the road as a camera crew, there's a couple of things that you absolutely have to have in your possession. This is one, this is the, the trail mix, as you see, DG. This is very, very personal. You don't let anyone else play with your nuts, but these basically keep you alive on the road because Jace can go all day without eating anything, whereas we actually have to eat so you if you've got some nuts, you can actually go and uh, at least keep yourself alive. So that's number one. Hmm, good. He's got his nuts. Um, that's Dilmar, that's the other camera operator. He drinks a lot of tea. Probably five a day, I reckon. Loves the tea. Loves it. So you've also got to set up four trucks this year. Don't forget, we've got the Back in Black, the 200, the D-Max and the MUX and they've got to have two cameras in each of them. I'm setting up some in-car cameras for the Muxi, the D-Max, the Cruiser, and all of them. <laughs> <laughs> He's worried about his food. <laughs> Just kidding. We know where we're going. Turn off the Ingham or something and go to the Savannah Way. And then you go Croydon and Normanton out that way. I think we, we're very, very, very close. It's late. It's getting, it's getting pretty dark now. So, but have a look on this side. We've got the Mercury, the four stroke sitting in there. So that's the 20. Uh, fits in there nicely, fits in there perfectly. It's on a little slide in there. That's perfect. Fuel tank. I've got uh, the rods. We've got all the rods up in the roof there in the rod holders, um, tackle bags there. I think we're good. I think we're getting there. We're nearly done. So we're gonna go for a crack and start early in the morning. So it's the morning we leave and get up and I get up pretty early because there's lots of things that I like to, I, you know, sort of going through my head that I've missed. But basically it's a matter of hooking the big 200 onto the big boat and rolling it out of the shed. Day one. Day one of the big, great adventure. Off into the sunset. Let's see how we go. Quick double check over the gear. Some photos. Awesome. And then of course, the part I hate the most, and that's saying goodbye to the family. So I've got to say goodbye to the kids and the missus because it's gonna be a while before I get back. But on the other hand, we are going off to have an absolute awesome time. No doubt about it, All For Adventure is about the adventure. Now it's been an absolute mission to get all the gear together, uh, you know, the, the new gear going on the trucks, uh, the prepping, 
the, you know, there's, there's new sponsors gear, all that stuff with the help of all my sponsors that have put, the, you know, help us put this show together, help us put these trucks together. A massive big thanks to the sponsors for all their hard work. I'll tell you what, All For Adventure is going to be one hell of a trip this year in the top end of Australia. There is so much to see and do and I cannot wait. I'm, I'm excited about where we're going and that's the best part about my job. I do get to live the All For Adventure dream.